Falstaff. Libretto by Arrigo Boito. First performance on the 9th of February, 1893, at the Teatro alla Scala, Milan. Towards the end of 1890, Verdi wrote to the Marquis Gino Monaldi, What can I tell you? I've wanted to write a comic opera for 40 years, and I've known the Merry Wives of Windsor for 50. However, the usual buts, which are everywhere, always prevented me from satisfying this wish of mine. Now Boito has resolved all the buts, and has written me a lyric comedy unlike any other. I'm enjoying myself writing the music, without plans of any sort, and I don't even know whether I'll finish it. I repeat, I'm enjoying myself. The Kingdom of Henry IV of England. At the Garter Inn, Sir John Falstaff, an old knight, is planning together with Bardolfo and Pistola, to seduce two rich ladies of Windsor, Mrs. Ford and Mrs. Page, in order to get their husband's money. Falstaff writes two identical love letters to the two women, but his servants refuse to deliver them because it goes against their honor. In his monologue, Falstaff explains to them the true meaning of honor. It's just a word. However, Falstaff's plan doesn't work. Alice and Meg are friends. And in conversation, they realize that the love letters that they have received are identical. With the help of Mrs. Quickly and their trusted friend, Nanetta, they decide to take revenge. Alice shall invite him to a fake rendezvous to make a mockery of him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bardolfo and Pistola, together with Dr. Caius, one of Nanetta's admirers, have revealed Falstaff's plan to Ford. <laughs> Fenton is secretly in love with Nanetta, who loves him back. The young man offers to punish Falstaff. Falstaff is at the Garter Inn. Mrs. Quickly arrives with a rather plain message. Alice is prepared to receive him. And so the trick on Falstaff is set in motion. A short time later, Ford, in disguise, encounters Falstaff, who doesn't recognize him, and confesses that he has a rendezvous with the beautiful Alice. Ford suffers an attack of jealousy. In Ford's house, the three women are planning the trick they will play on Falstaff. Nanetta learns that her father plans to arrange her marriage to Dr. Caius but all the women agree that this cannot happen. Falstaff arrives to meet Alice, where he displays all his best courting techniques. But soon Falstaff is forced to hide because Ford, leading a group of men, arrives to take revenge for his slighted honor. The ladies hide Falstaff in a hamper full of dirty clothes. To the sound of the laughter of all present, the hamper containing Falstaff is thrown out of the window into a river. In the square in front of the Garter Inn, Falstaff is furious that he ended up in the river, but he cheers himself up with a glass of mulled wine. But his troubles are not over yet. Mrs. Quickly tells him that Alice has a burning desire to see him, and she manages to make him agree to a second rendezvous. 
he will come to Hearn's Oak at midnight, disguised as the Black Huntsman. It is the middle of the night. In Windsor Forest, Fenton sings a sonnet that overflows with passion and poetic sweetness for his beloved Nanetta. Falstaff arrives at the rendezvous. Alice pretends to appreciate his amorous advances. But all of a sudden, a band of presumed elves and fairies launch themselves on Falstaff, tormenting, pinching and thrashing him. The joke is over when Falstaff recognises Bardolfo. Falstaff acknowledges that he has received his due. Now Ford announces that a wedding shall follow. Coincidentally, a second couple asks to be married. Ford blesses the couples, but instead of Nanetta, Dr. Caius has married Bardolfo, who is dressed in a fairy queen outfit. So Ford has unwittingly married Fenton and Nanetta. Falstaff discovers he is not the only one to have been made a fool of, and pronounces the closing words, tutto nel mondo e burla, all the world is a prank. For the finale of his last opera, Verdi composed a fugue, perhaps the most severe musical form, and perhaps the least suitable for the closure of a comic opera. But this is what Verdi decided. He was not mistaken. And he left the most beautiful artistic testament, which crowned his immense career. Falstaff is Giuseppe Verdi's last opera, which he composed when he was almost 80 years old, after his operatic career had reached extraordinary heights and enjoyed unanimous success. Falstaff was Verdi's third libretto based on Shakespeare. After Macbeth and Othello, it was the turn of a comic subject. This wasn't Verdi's first experience in the comic genre, but in the past, he had not had great results. His second opera, Un Giorno di Regno, had been a flop. And this failure represented a real psychological blow for Verdi, to the point where he considered abandoning the world of theatre altogether. In the case of Falstaff, the intervention of his friend and trusted librettist, Arrigo Boito, played a decisive role. He convinced Verdi that the comic subject had to be put to music for the composer to end his extraordinary artistic career on a high note and to the sound of noisy laughter. Hey, Verdi wrote to the librettist, in outlining Falstaff, did you never think of the enormous number of my years? You must agree, I could be accused of great foolhardiness in taking on so much. Supposing I couldn't stand the strain, and failed to finish it? But Boito had no intention of backing down, and convinced as he was that the Shakespearean subject held extraordinary possibilities, he managed to persuade the aging composer, who eventually declared, Amen, so be it. We'll write this false stuff then. We won't think for the moment of obstacles, age or illness. And so it was that Verdi accepted, and Falstaff, presented at Teatro alla Scala in Milan on the 9th of February 1893, became a clamorous success and an ironic farewell from Italy's greatest opera composer. <laughs> In the classification of Verdi's most performed operas in the world, Falstaff comes in sixth place. In the classification of the most performed operas in the world, Falstaff comes in 24th place.